So currently in the 10th tier, one club reportedly have the youngest football club owners in the world. A group of seven 19 year old friends decided that they were going to become the new owners of Walton and Hersham. It's a bit bizarre seeing such young people getting in charge of a football club with no one else that's more experienced alongside them to really help them. Will they actually be able to make a success of this or is it effectively just a real life football manager challenge that's taken a bit too far? We'll be looking into this in this video but first of all this video is sponsored by one football which is a great way to set up with lots of different information from football across the footballing world not only in the national league but also in the football league premier league and lots of different leagues across the world it's got an average rating of 4.7 and 4.8 on apple and android so it's a very highly rated app and i do recommend that you go and download it for staying up to date with lots of different information such as league tables fixtures results stats transfers news all sorts of different things so yeah if you haven't downloaded it yet the link to download it will be in the top line of the description but yeah let's get straight on to what's going on at Walton and Hersham. The club who were founded as a result of the merger of Walton and Hersham in 1945 have some interesting things going on in their history including a forward win over Brian Clough's Brighton the FA Cup in 1974 and also had Sir Stanley Matthews as club president in the 1980s as well as Martin Tyler coaching them in 2005. So following the end of the 18-19 season the previous owner at Walton and Hersham was looking to step aside. He's been in charge for 30 years and his own son wasn't really interested in taking it on so he needed to find some new owners. That's when some friends of the owner's son decided that they actually might want to give it a bit of a shot. One of the seven co-owners, Sarte Tucker, said Alan Smith, who was the previous owner, didn't want to continue running the club and his son, Toby, couldn't really see himself committing so much time to the club because of other commitments. One of my mates, who's another of the owners, knows Toby personally, so he devised this idea. He came up with a plan and we pitched it to Toby Smith the de facto chairman at the time. He really liked it and a good opportunity to breathe fresh life into the team. So you could view this as just the owner seeing it as an easy way out to give this club away to some young people that were ambitious and passionate and wanted to take this on as a bit of a challenge. But it did start off as a bit of a crazy idea that really just formulated into something they really thought actually might be able to work. Obviously at first we all thought it was an absolutely crazy idea, but we delved into it a bit more and looked at how something like this might work in practice, it actually became more feasible. They've already titled themselves as the class of 18 and they're all university students at universities right across England. But they all went to the same school until last year they all went off to university. So go over the club in June 2019. They've actually already changed the club's crest as well as the club's management team. One thing that has actually helped them and is one of the things that's a big problem about a lot of non-league clubs trying to carry on going is the fact that their ground is owned by a local contractor as part of the council so that basically means that he will saw everything in terms of maintaining the pitch and things around the stadium that's something that they don't have to worry about because for a lot of non-league clubs but they need volunteers that are going to help to try and sustain these types of things the odd jobs the things that people don't really want to do are the things that often cause a lot of problems in the lower levels of non-league this has allowed these seven friends to just focus on the football side of things which is where their passion obviously lies it is a dream for seven young people seven friends to own a football club how cool is that as a prospect but in reality there is a lot of work that needs to go in on the money side of things a lot of clubs at lower levels in non-league sort of 10th tier and below you do find that there are a lot of teams in these leagues that are fully amateur which does remove the aspect of the, the seven friends needing a lot of money behind them to try and make a success of this however there are still teams that do pay players just look at the likes of jersey bulls who are currently top of the Combine Counties League Division 1, which is where Wolves and Hersham play. They are top of the table with nine wins from nine. They're a newly founded club from the Channel Islands who are obviously very ambitious and want to get as high as possible. So that's what they've sort of got to compete against. And it's going to make things harder for Walton and Hersham. Obviously, with time, the passion that they have will help them gain more experience. If they can continue that, then they might be successful. Last season, they got relegated from the Combine County's Premier Division. They're at the bottom of the leagues. So they are looking to rebuild. The Seven Friends do have a lot of varied skill sets, though. They are studying a whole range of different subjects at universities. But one problem, potentially, is the fact that they are at different universities right across England. So they're going to be relatively far away, some of them. 
uh, most of the time during the year because they're gonna have to spend a lot of their time studying obviously as they are full-time students so how much time are they actually gonna be able to dedicate to this club and is it just something that seems like a decent idea short term will it actually end up working in the long term we'll see over the next few years whether that actually makes success of it or if they are still gonna be in charge for the next few years because while you're young and you haven't got a huge amount of responsibilities taking on something like this might seem like a fun idea but there is still a lot of challenges that go into running a non-league club that maybe they might not have realised at the time. As I mentioned, Jersey Bulls are top of the table, but Walton Hersham, after seven games, are currently sat in seventh position. They play two less than the league leaders, and they're on 13 points. So they've done relatively decently to start this season, and this has come after they have struggled for the last five or ten years, the class of 18 do say. It's suffered three relegations in ten years. There's been a lot of disinterest around the club, so for us, the main thing is to re-energise the club, get people turning up to the games again, get the team winning, and game promotion. Promotion. promotion is our ultimate aim we want to return to step five and then we can take a view next summer of where the club goes do you think that this will be a success in the long term do you think that these seven young guys can make a success of this i certainly wish them all the best and hope that they can prove that age is just a number and it doesn't matter that they are quite young they can still go and make a success of this but yeah let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below if you enjoyed this video remember to hit the like button and click subscribe as well to stay up to date with lots of different information and unique stories like this one from non-league football and yeah i hope to see you in the next video and thanks for watching